Hello folks, I forgot to film the intro to this before installing the backdrop, so here it is. Big reveal. That's the backdrop. Anyway, let's take a few steps back and I'll show you how I got to this point. It was almost two years ago when I started building this layout, and for about half of that time it's looked more or less finished. However, there's always been one major thing missing, and that of course was a backdrop. It wasn't such an issue when the layout was in front of the window, but since I moved it to this side of the room, it just has this big blank wall behind it, and that doesn't look very good. So at long last, I decided it was about time I installed a proper backdrop on the Westport and Shelter Cove Railway. My original plan was to make a photo backdrop from scratch, but I then figured out how much work that entailed and decided to scale back my ambitions a bit. Instead, I bought a backdrop from trainjunkies.com. I have no affiliation with this site, but I do really like them. They have a really good selection of backdrops for sale, and they can make custom ones for you as well. Before I ordered, I emailed them with some questions, and they were very friendly and helpful. I definitely recommend them. The backdrop I chose is called Mountain Spring Snow with Trees, and I actually bought the O-Scale version instead of the HO version because I wanted it to be as long and tall as possible. The layout covers 14 feet of wall, but the largest standard length on the site is 12 feet, and it would have cost significantly more to make a custom backdrop two feet longer, so I decided to just get the standard 12-foot version and not have it go all the way to the ends of the layout. This didn't really matter in the end because one end is right next to a window, and the other one is tucked away back in a corner. The backdrop is two feet tall, which is plenty of room for the snowy mountains to realistically tower over the scenery and give a good illusion of distance. The backdrop comes printed on a continuous 12-foot roll of paper, but I didn't particularly feel like wrangling a giant 12-foot piece of paper that keeps wanting to roll itself up. So instead, I decided to cut it into three sections, mount them on 2 by 4 foot pieces of plastic signboard, and attach them to the wall behind the layout. Since I had to cover two 6-foot sections of wall with three 4-foot sections of signboard, I put a 90 degree bend in the middle of one so that it could slot neatly into the corner behind the station. The most involved part of this process was cutting the backdrop and attaching it to the signboards. To attach it, I used heavy duty double sided tape. This stuff is really strong so I didn't have to use very much of it. I put a strip of it all the way along each edge that lines up against another section and just in the corners everywhere else. To cut the backdrop itself, I lined one end up and attached it first, then cut the paper with a fresh utility blade using the signboard itself as a ruler. To stop the edges of the paper from curling away from the board, I put packing tape over every edge that didn't have the double-sided tape all the way along it, including the top and bottom. The final step was to attach them to the wall. To do this, I rested them on top of nails pushed into the wall just below the level of the layout, pushed the sections of the backdrop tight up against each other, and used more small squares of the double-sided tape on the upper corners to attach them to the wall. The final result is a continuous backdrop with barely visible seams, and if I ever decide to move the layout again, the backdrop can easily come with it. And that's about it! Backdrops make a huge difference to how a layout looks, and although I should have added one a lot sooner, I'm glad it's done now. It really helps convey the cozy, idyllic Pacific Northwest backwoods atmosphere I was going for with this layout. I've deliberately avoided pinning down a specific real location for the Westport and Shelter Cove, but there are many little bits of it that take inspiration from various real places from California to Alaska, and I think the backdrop really helps tie it all together. It makes it look a little bit less like a small diorama in a room, and a little bit more like the real thing.
I guess this is really the last major element of this layout to be finished. Of course, no model railroad is ever really finished, and I'm sure I'll think of something to add in the future, but for now, I'm pretty darn happy with how this looks. Anyway, folks, that's it for now, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.